Well, hello again and welcome to the VK6CS farm with Amateur Radio Channel. Um, I'm not sure if these actually look a bit like, uh, they might look a little bit brighter, but what I've done is, okay, I know it's DC, but uh, what I've done is I've uh, got a variable voltage power supply here and I've set the voltage, the output voltage to 25.2 volts, which is 2 times 12.6, and they're still only drawing 9.7 amps. So if I'd have managed to squeak another couple of volts out of my heater transformer, the actual current drawn by the valves wouldn't be, uh, wouldn't be different. Now, it might be that they're a little bit brighter, but uh, I'll say there's very much in it. Um, Al VK6KIF suggested that it might be worth putting another couple of turns on the, uh, on the heater transformer just to get that extra couple of volts out of it. Um, so that might be, uh, might be on the cards. And um, just while you're there, um, I thought, well, I don't have the RF choke to go across the output yet. You know, the one that uh, should the, uh, the DC blocking capacitor between the anode and the tank circuit go short, um, it would just provide a short to ground and, um, uh, and uh, kill the HT supply. So there's no HT gets out to the antenna. So I wound that on uh, four bits of ferrite and uh, stuck it in a uh, capacitor clamp there. And I thought, yeah, that's a nice, nice, neat little choke. It can go on the output. Um, when I measured it, it was only 178 microhenries, and uh, I thought, well, I've got these things that were off the shelf from JCAR. I've got two of those soldered together there, but these are 470 microhenries each. So uh, instead of using that, I might just use a couple of these, or maybe even three of these. Three of these, you know, around a little, uh, around a little uh, um, non-conductive rod and then mounted uh, in, a, in a similar sort of fashion, I suppose, vertically, um, you know, to uh, go across the RF output. Because, I mean, that will be, uh, oh, you know, that's not going to be bothered by um, uh, low frequencies. I mean, 470 microhenries each. So what's that? That's, uh, that's, that's, uh, that's quite a lot of microhenries. <laughs> and what do you think of this? scored myself. Someone actually said, um, you know, shouldn't shouldn't you have some fans on those things, Steve? And I thought, actually, yeah, I probably should. So here is um, a rather nice fan tray. Yeah, look at that. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? That's all ready to go. A couple of fans on there. Nice, uh, a nice fan panel. So that could go really. Uh, I don't want to knock these things over, of course. But, uh, you know, in the actual amplifier, that could go uh, something like that. So, uh, you know, got a nice, uh, got a nice fan panel there with a couple of fans. One per valve. And I could move the valves a little bit closer together as well, so there's one valve in front of each fan. Um, so, uh, yeah, slowly, uh, slowly getting the bits and pieces together for it. It is slowly, uh, slowly coming together. That's quite a nice fan panel, that actually. It look great from the outside. Oh, I can't turn it over now. But the cable's caught on something. I'll need my other hand to free it. But uh, there you go. So that's uh, that's the GU81Ms. This time being lit up with a little bit of DC. Uh, there's no HT on. They're not glowing red. That's an optical illusion. A little bit on the RF choke, and uh, there we are. 25.2 volts. 25.2 volts, 9.7 amps, so they're not drawing the 11 amps. Mind you, I think, I'll have to read the spec again, but it probably says 11 amps, you know, plus or minus a certain percentage. So uh, it's obviously minus that percentage. What I might do is put the valves individually on this variable voltage power supply and crank them up to 12, individually up to 12.6 volts and see if, uh, see if they both draw a similar sort of heater current. That might make, a, might make an interesting video, won't it? Anyway, just for now, uh, as always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.